Catheter related bloodstream infections are the one of the commonest nosocomial infection, bloodstream infection which result in lot of morbidity and mortality. And I think the most important thing to prevent CRBSI is the proper education of the nurses and the clinicians, the proper surveillance and uh, one has to properly do the hand hygiene, the cutaneous uh, antisepsis, then sterile barrier precautions, proper observation and uh, the, all these factors can prevent the catheter related blood stream infection or what we call the CRBSI. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Ramesh, I want to ask you, how quickly can you say, suppose I insert a catheter today, how quickly can you say that it is CRBSI? It's a very good question, Dr. Chawla. It's a common question I think a lot of people think about. The first thing I would look at is, uh, if a patient develops a fever in the ICU, and uh, the first thing I would do is a detailed examination of the patient from head to toe. It has to be completely uncovered, head to toe, a careful examination looking for every possible source of infection in the ICU. I would look for sites of any prosthetic devices, look for lung signs with increased secretions, changes in oxygen, if there's any surgical wounds, drains, abdomen, the catheter site obviously, and the duration of the catheter in place, and the risk factor of the patient. Look at all those things. And I need to be reasonably sure that I can't find any other source and the catheter seems to be a likely source. Then I worry about CRBSA as the likely source. If I have worsening secretions, new onset infiltrates, worsening hypoxemia, then more likely than not, then it's going to be a pneumonia than a CRBSA. So long answer short, detailed examination, rule out all other possible causes of fever, uh, think of non-infective causes of fever. Then if you think there is no other explanation for fever except the catheter, based on the circumstances, then I would worry about CRBSI as the no, first how diagnosis. quickly can you say that? It's very difficult to say it. Uh, uh, within, I mean, they say within 48 hours, if you don't have any oh, other... Uh, so from the time of line insertion? From the time of line insertion. Okay. So the, the, the puristic answer is, according to the CDC guideline, the duration is, irresp even if the, there is no minimum duration before you need to call it as a CRBSI, according to the CDC definition, even one day is adequately good. But probably what we have seen uh, is somewhere around five days, the chances of CRBSI starts going up. And uh, around that time is where I would think of it. In a high risk patient like burns and patients who have other issues, maybe even three days is enough to cause a CRBSI. So in that context, but the puristic answer from CDC is no minimum, hours, no minimum duration is rec recommended. But very unlikely in day one or day two if it's a very sterile elective line.